Your Honor, we have concerns about the defendant's mental health. Um, it looks like he just knocked out the victim cold uh, without any type of provocation. When officers questioned him, he said uh, he, he did it because he believed the victim was George Bush. Uh, so we'd like him to get a mental health evaluation. What's up, court nerds? Welcome back to Time Serve, the channel that scans the dockets so you don't have to. And boy, do we have a double dose of justice for you today. We first go to Judge Mark Braunlich's courtroom where he's dealing with mom and dad who are at each other's throats. And mom's making claims that dad just threw his daughter out in the middle of the night and told her to get the fudge out. Then we journey to my boy, Judge John Stevens out of Jefferson County, Texas, and he catches a liar in the act. It's a habitual felon hearing, and this guy just rubs judge the wrong way, and he's the wrong judge to tangle with. Make sure you hit that like and subscribe and set your notifications to all and never miss the daily court dockets. I'm your boy, Phil, and you've been served. Dennis Boone Jr. Mr. Boone is present. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. We met with uh, Mr. Walker from the front of the court. Mr. Walker has provided the court the fine recommendation that the issues of custody and parenting time and child support be referred to the front of the court for formal investigation recommendation. With each party having 21 days like to object to any such recommendation. Uh, further, that this uh, case be opted into all front of the court services as of June 1st, 2023. The issue of child support arrears balance be reserved and the matter be adjourned to September 20th, 2023 at 1045 a.m. That's recommendation. Ms. Korski, is this recommendation agree with your client? It is. Uh, Ms. Kajuski, is this recommendation agree with your client? It is. Okay, will there be some uh, discovery in the interim? Is that correct? Yes. yes. Okay, so we can find out what documentation uh, that Mr. Boone has about uh, the $14,400, where he acquired that, the source of that. Uh, let's allege that there was a lump sum payment made. Um, so, uh, yes, that's one of many discovery items we'll be doing. We're also finding out about the sex offender status of uh, the stepfather. Okay. Um, what about is the child being administered all prescribed medications? Or does the court need to address that? She is, Your Honor. My client also got her um, two days after she left her father's home. My, my client got her started with Mark Haskins. So she's seeing Mr. Haskins regularly for therapy. But is the child admit, uh, prescribed medication? Yes. Yes, and she's getting her, mom always gave her her medication. She continues to do so. Okay, what about dad? Is uh, Mr. Boone administering uh, prescribed medications? The child hasn't been at her father's home since my client picked her up. And Ms. Schultz refuses to return the child to Mr. Boone, so she is not agreeing to follow your, your court order, Judge. Okay, but Mr. Boone's agreeable to put this off to September 20th, is that correct? Um, we did look at earlier dates and we did try to find something before school starts, but we've not been able to do that. So I, I think the party should be following your order until such time as there is an adjourned hearing date and until September 20th, um, when perhaps a new order is entered. So the child's been with mom since May, is that correct? Yes. And with dad okay. for several months prior. Has there been any contact between uh, Caitlin and her dad since then? Uh, FaceTime, phone contact, any other contact? Sorry? No, she just went and spent two days with her grandpa, which is his father. He did not try to contact her or come see her previous to that, which was about two weeks after I picked her up when he threw her out of his house. Um, he came over to his dad's when Caitlin was sleeping on the couch and she woke up, startled, looked at him, didn't say anything. He walked out, slammed the door, and told her to have a nice effing life. That was the last thing that I know of. And what about the therapeutic counseling? As we uh, 
What about the parties? Can they, uh, uh, the, the court wants to reestablish a relationship between dad and daughter. What about family counseling shelter services? Your Honor. Any objection? Is there any objection, Ms. Kajewski, to the, the uh, court ordering that the dad have contact with my child in therapeutic setting at family counseling shelter services? I think that'd be great. No right. objection. Um, and All Carrie, right. maybe you can sign a release so that family counseling and shelter services can talk to Mr. Haskins. Yes, that would be fine. All right, Mr. Walker, if you could add to your recommendation that uh, both parties shall contact Family Council Health Services, schedule intakes. Each will be responsible for their own intake fees. Uh, defendant father shall be responsible for the cost of the, the sessions. And let's get that going so that between now and September 20th, we at least have some contact. That's, that's, that's almost two months away. Um, so if we need to provide, maybe in your rec, you can put the phone number for that agency. They can both contact Family Council Health Services forthwith to schedule the intake so we can get these sessions, hopefully weekly sessions between dad and daughter. And uh, perhaps that social worker can uh, help facilitate um, reconnecting dad with daughter. That's the hope here. Ms. Kajus, are you familiar with that agency? I am not. So uh, okay. yeah, Mr. Walker, if you could provide me the phone number or put it in the in the rack and I'll get a copy of the rack. That'd be great. Your Honor, would you like me to give them the phone number now as well since so that they have sure. it? Start? Sure. Well, the parties can write it down. Mr. Boone, you got a pen? You can write down this phone number to contact the agency. Schedule an intake. This is for a therapeutic supervised printing time. So you'll meet with uh, mom will drop off uh, Caitlin. You'll have to spend an hour with Caitlin in a setting where you have just a master's level um, social worker observing and she'll provide a, a written report to the front of the court. So it's Judge, I'm actually concerned that I don't think we, the evidentiary basis has been satisfied for Mr. Boone to have supervised parenting time. That seems like a, we're making a ruling different than the, than the prior order. Um, but right, on right. Matter you know, Mr. Juski, if he doesn't want contact, then I'll leave it to the party to work that out. I'm, I'm trying to facilitate time between dad and daughter. If he doesn't want it, we'll skip that. I, I, I don't have review date till September 20th. I'm trying to facilitate time with dad and daughter. If you don't, if you, Mr. Boone doesn't want it, I'm not going to force it. Okay, you could go ahead and give me the phone number, and I'll um, I'll talk to my client after the the hearing. Okay, about that. yeah. If he chooses not to schedule an intake, that means he doesn't want to have any face to face contact with Caitlin in a supervised setting. That the the they try to help out, they encourage the child to have some uh, contact with dad. Mom, of course, will be required to take uh, Caitlin there. Hopefully, it's a, a way to start that restart that relationship. That's all the court's trying to do, Ms. Kajuski. So we'll. Uh, Provide for that, and if, if your client chooses not to take advantage of it, then so be it. The Mr. Walker, do you have phone number? Yes, Your Honor. The phone number is 734-241-0180. I will also put that into the recommended order. Yes, yeah, so put that into order, and Ms. Uh, Ms. Gorsuch, you're at the court of Mr. Wound uh, chooses not to follow up with the intake, uh, then so be it. Okay. But the parties shall pay their own intake fee, and then uh, Mr. Boone shall pay the uh, the session fees. So, Carrie, if you could just reach out to the agency um, today, and then again, and let them know that you're here, and then maybe next week or in a couple of weeks, and see if Mr. Boone has elected to do that. If he has, then make Caitlin available, and if he hasn't, then you don't need to. Okay. Uh, and. Ms. Boone Corwin would suggest, encourage you to have Kaylin reach out to her dad, whether it's even just a text message or a FaceTime or something. Um, both of you need to work together to make sure that they have a good relationship with the other parents. So do what you can to, to encourage that. Your Honor. I understand dad's got dad's to reach out to, but uh, whatever you can do to make encourage it from uh, Kaylin's standpoint, that's important. Can, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you, Mr. Boone. Your Honor, actually, what actually happened is that I was told by my daughter to not text her and her mother told me to not text her, to not talk to her, to not contact her. See, that's the part that nobody is listening to me and hearing my side of what is actually going on here. I did not kick my daughter out of my house. I told my daughter to go spend the three days that she was suspended with her mother because her mother felt like I was not giving her her medication. And I actually was. There was some discrepancy with the amount of medication my daughter was supposed to be getting. That is what actually happened. Okay. Well, the uh, both the parents should uh, administer all prescribed medication to the minor child when the child's with them. And the court just simply wants 
Yeah, Mr. Boone, do you have the reestablished relationship with Caitlin that you had for so long? So this is a way the, the court believes it can be done. They're going to have contact, and Ms. Boone is required to transport Caitlin to that facility. Ms. Boone, not you should always point. encourage Caitlin. You should not discourage her from contacting the other parents. So with that, the court's going to adopt the recommendation. I fully understand your position, Mr. Boone. Uh, and there's always two sides to everything, without question. Yes, sir. And so the court would encourage you to follow up with this agency. If you choose not to, then then I I don't know what to tell you. Maybe Ms. caduce has got an answer for you. Okay. Uh, I just I just want, I don't I want to wait heard. two months to re reestablish the contact. I, I just want to be heard. That's all. I don't I don't want to I don't want to continue on with them saying they're one sided. You know, their lies because it, it's not fair to me. Okay. Well, you certainly, uh, it's, uh, you have every right to, to text Caitlin. If she chooses not to respond, I don't know what to tell you, but you certainly have every right to, to reach out to her saying, hey, can we FaceTime? Uh, I would certainly do that, Mr. Boone. And I, I tried to facilitate the uh, relationship between her and her mother for the nine months that Caitlin was living with me because Lance is a uh, sex offender and that made my daughter uncomfortable. Him being in her bed and everything, looking at her and eyeballing her. But um i guess i don't get the same respect from her mother as i gave her so okay well the court fully understands your position mr boone so at this point in time uh, uh the, the matter will be adjourned to september 20th um uh, both you will be interviewed as well as caitlin caitlin by the front of the court they'll provide a recommendation hopefully you can have some contact with caitlin in the interim so contact the agency today the court would encourage you mr boone it's a, it's, a, it's a way to, to facilitate some contact with Caitlin between as soon as possible. That's probably the quickest way to make contact with Caitlin face to face, person to person. Obviously, you need equal parenting time. So uh, we need to we need to repair this relationship and miss we need, need to do, do everything you can to repair that relationship. You owe it to Caitlin. Your Honor, I do try to get her to talk to her dad. Um, she won't because of what, how he threw her out with three trash bags full of stuff. And then a week later took all of the rest of her stuff, except for her electronics and left them in the garage at his dad's house for me to come pick up. So she basically okay. has zero items at his house, except for electronics. Oh, and we do need to get that, that, um, iPad thing, that tablet back to the school. The, the Chrome cover. Chrome yeah. Yeah. So can we ask Mr. that Mr. Boone do that so that my client doesn't get charged for it? Any objection, Ms. Kajewski? Know, yeah, Mr. Boone, do you know, do you have that laptop iPad? Do you know where it is? Are you able to return it to the school and give? I, I don't know where it's at. Every, everything that was in her room was in the, uh, I took it to my dad's garage because that's what everybody wanted. That's what everybody wanted. See, she's trying to paint me as being this monster. And well, I'm let's, sick let's, let's, let's move forward. So I, obviously it's in dad's garage, Michelle. So check dad's garage. It's not. I already picked up all of the items from there. Mr. Boone, if you can find it, maybe look around, see if you can find a laptop. You, I would think you know if there's a laptop around. See if you can find it. Make arrangements to have it returned. Yes, sir. Because otherwise the school is going to charge the parents. So, Miss Boone, there's no different. A lot of times parents will tell me, well, my daughter doesn't want to see their other parent. And it's just like the daughter of the child saying, Mom, I don't feel like going to school. They have to. They have to go to school. They have to have a relationship with other parent. So she can regret it at some point in time in her life. She's 12 years old. You need to help her. You ought to, Caitlin, to help her restore a relationship with her dad. I understand there's an issue in the past. Move forward from here. Don't, don't harp on what happened in the past. Move forward. I am encouraging her, Your Honor. Um, yeah. I also asked Caitlin if she would be, if she would like to do counseling or supervised visits with her dad um, due to the things that he said to her and the fact that she told him that she wanted to kill herself and he handed her his gun is what she is telling me and the counselor. She is afraid to be around him. Well, but she'll be safe in a supervised setting, Carrie. So you can let her know that if Mr. Boone elects to use family counseling and shelter services, there will be someone present. It is perfectly safe. Okay. And of course, the court's ordering that, Ms. Schultz. If Mr. Boone follows through, your court's ordering that you transport Caitlin to that agency to see Dad once a week for an hour. Yes, I will do that. All right. Um, all right. The court uh, uh, will adopt the modified recommendation addressing, including the provision for family counseling child services. And um, hopefully, the parties can 
work through things between now and September 20th. All right, that'll conclude this. A copy of this order will be sent to council who can then forward on to the parties. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. All right, thank you. I am ready on the middle of one if you are. You're Robert Wills. What's the bond on this case? Ten thousand. Really? No. That seems good. When was that posted? It's like October of twenty two. Really? October twenty seventh of twenty twenty two. Eight months later, he gets invited. Yeah. Hmm. You've been indicted on a very lengthy indictment, which charges you not only with the state jail felony of solicitation of prostitution, but you have a prior conviction the state's in 92 for the third degree felony of unauthorized use of a motor vehicle out of Galveston County. Another unauthorized use of a motor vehicle conviction on that same day in 92 out of Galveston County. And the third one for unauthorized use of a motor vehicle out of Galveston County. So there were three convictions. Then thereafter, those were final. You committed the offense of robbery and were convicted of that in 99 in Galveston County, Texas. Then later, you were convicted of burglary out of Galveston County in 2001 and another burglary of a habitation in August of 2001 out of Galveston County, Texas. Thereafter, all of that became final. You've committed the felony of burglary of a habitation and were finally convicted of that in 2008 in Galveston County, Texas. So it looks as though you're facing a state jail felony punished as though it were a second degree felony, which is no less than two, no more than 20 years confinement in prison. <clears throat> what is this bond again, please? It's 10,000. And that was, that was set by the magistrate on what day? Please? October 27th of 22. Okay. You didn't, obviously, they did not know about all these prior convictions, which have everything, <clears throat> a big part in assessment of a bond. Your bond is no longer $10,000, sir. Reviewing your criminal history, which is the uh, a very important factor that goes into the setting of a bond, which the magistrate did not know about because these were Galveston right. County convictions. <clears throat> can I speak to you? When I'm through speaking, uh, you can speak. Uh, your bond will be $50,000, not $10,000. Plus, a GPS device must be acquired as a condition of a bond because of the seven prior serious felony convictions that you have, which are third degrees or greater, uh, you don't have any business committing more crimes. Um, so it makes it difficult every time you get rearrested, this should have uh, you know, gotten out of your system. And you need to be very careful about avoiding to commit other crimes. But those are going to be the conditions of bondage. Uh, do you have an attorney? No. You need one. You need one. You're looking at up to 20 years in prison. Are you working something? Yes. Sir. Uh, doing what? I work less. Well, okay. How much are you making an hour at four? Four clips. 16, 16. Yeah, that's 35,000. It's a lot of money. Who was your bondsman on this? You ASAP, Bill Bond. What's the name of it? ASAP. Oh, a ASAP. Yes. Do you know the owner? Uh, I don't know. You don't know? Okay. Uh, 
So that's the uh, how long have you been working? Uh, is it White Cat? Yes. How long have you been working with them? I've been working out for my going on almost five months. Five. Yes, sir. Before that, I'm working in New Gates Rice. And are you still at 835 Goliath? Sorry. Mm -hmm. All right. What, go ahead. What did you want to say? Um, prior to this uh, event, this, this event, sir, I was uh, going on vacation. I asked my my father if I can go, and he he approved it. I did go. Okay. And uh, while I was on the cruise ship, wait, wait, wait. A bonds? Why did you have a bondsman? Look. I've been on this case. This, I've been out of one in this case, sir, for the long time. So this happened on October 26th of last year. Yeah, I've been you out. Posted, you, so you posted, it looks like you posted a bond on October 28th, like two days later. Yes, sir. And I've been out here since. Oh, okay. And, so, I have, and uh, what I was saying was I went on a cruise. When? Uh, March the fourth of this year. Yes, sir. I went on the cruise, okay. and I was uh, I was arrested, rearrested on this charge, and I shouldn't have been rearrested, and I stayed in jail five days trying to get out, and they said that I got out on a proper cause, and I didn't get out on a proper cause. I got out on oh, the what on proper or uh, what you call it? Yeah, I don't know what that. I mean, I'm uh, not. Done. I think you just. Yeah, I think you're misstating what it is, and it was because it doesn't make sense. I think it was something like that. I don't know, but it's supposed to have been the three day accusation that they had supposed to let. It was a come down to it. It was a mistake. What was a mistake? They were arresting me. Oh, okay. Well, they that's not. Yeah, they arrested me. Yeah, that's not what you're here yeah, for. But it was for the same case. Okay, but that's not what you're here for. You're here for uh, an initial appearance so that we can make sure that you get a lawyer and i mean because this thing was indicted just last month and that's normally four or five weeks later we have an initial appearance to make sure that you're getting a lawyer and that your bond is correct but when your bond was set originally the bond, the magistrate who did it was not aware they wouldn't have been aware that you had all these prior felony convictions out of galveston county which factor into the bond equation and that's that's what you those things always follow you that's why it's always a wise idea not to get in trouble again because it catches up with you and it is like a gorilla on your back you got to drag it around so don't get arrested is my suggestion but here you are so you got to deal with it <coughs> um you haven't talked to any lawyers since you were arrested in october so they had said that they was gonna uh want me huh. why would they how long have you had that job at the warehouse i had it for about five months i can see all right <clears throat> So you would have, you wouldn't have had that job at the time you were arrested initially in October. I was working at a Duke Ace Licensing. How much were you making there? Oh, Eleven dollars. Mm -hmm. Well, you've you've increased your bond, your, your pay fifty percent. Uh, so, have you talked to any lawyers about helping you? You know, so I was going to you, you, you were going to talk to somebody? Yes, sir. Who? Uh, I was going to get in today when I got out from work, try to see if I can get in touch with soon. Okay. You didn't have anybody in mind? Mm -hmm. I don't know any change. Here, anyway. Who represented Jen Galveston? Was it somebody out of Galveston? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, there are a lot of lawyers here um, who are good lawyers who can help people. 
state want to say anything? One thing I'm noting on the file judges, it, it's indicating that maybe Langston Adams was appointed at one point in time. Okay. Yeah, there's no reason to appoint him. Yeah, he's the man's making enough money if, but, it, unless I raise his bond like I was going to do. But I'm, I, I think, do. I, I'm thinking about just not doing that and letting him get out there and go hire somebody. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But you got to do it expediently. Okay. I'm going to reset this for um, four weeks for you to go uh, get a lawyer, okay? And we'll just keep the bond the way it is. Thank you. Well, you need to stay away from trouble because the past is never really in the past. Famous quote from a book. It's never really in the past. So it's always there to haunt you. So you don't want it to, you don't want to open that door and let it come out. Yes. Which follow the rules and quit, you know, don't commit crimes. Yes. Even a state jail felony with your criminal history uh, puts you in a position where it would, it would not just be a two year maximum as in most cases with state jail felonies, but you're looking at up to 20 years because of your criminal history. So. Okay. It's another reason to follow the rules. Okay. Get a resetting. We'll see you back in four weeks. Uh, if you hire somebody, give them that resetting so they know when you have to be back. Okay. Yes, Thank you. you. Jessica Wright. <coughs> Jessica Wright is next. 23 seconds. Okay. Thank you. The ones from today. I have a bunch this afternoon, too. Right? Mm -hmm. Okay. If I may, Your Honor. You certainly may, Your Honor. Thank you. Um, Mr. Ham and I have uh, been talking. Um, oh, yeah, that's good. Um, offers he of, talks. Off, offers have been he made. He talks. Yes. He does. Offers have been made. Um, I presented them to um, Mr. Uh, Noble. On the docket, it's showing Jason Noble, but it, his name is Noble with an S. Oh, an S. I'm sorry. Noble, it'll be only. Well, the indictment is wrong. Right. Oh. One's right, one's wrong. Well, what I have, what, what do you mean, one is wrong? I, I thought, uh, I, when, first off, number yeah, one, Your Honor, I thought last time we were here, we, we talked about that. And, I had two uh, indictments and they both say no much. Okay. Uh, I have one that's three, 21 37731 stalking, then 097303, which is an old indictment. Why do I have that? They both have an alias with the name of Jason Noble, Your Honor. Yes. I'm sorry, say that again. It has both. Your Honor. That's correct, Judge. It has Jason Noble, AKA Jason. And the, um, the alias is there, uh, correspond with the priors as well, Judge. So. Save, save it off and leave it as it is. What is your what is your birth name? Jason Gregory Noble. Noble? No. Singular. Like without an S. Okay. So this 097303 is a disposed of case, I guess. Which one, Judge? Zero nine seven three zero three, or is that an old case that's pending? I have this a copy of this indictment. Zero nine seven three zero three. Is that a, con a prior conviction? Yeah, it must be, Judge. Let's see. It shows here on the other indictment. Yeah, it does. I don't know why it was added on the top, but anyway, the issue is we're dealing with 237734 all the way around, right? Say the, I'm yes, sorry. 37734. Yes, sir. Is the indictment. That's one of them. Now, yes, sir. he's charged with stalking, uh, third degree felony. <clears throat> Let's see. 
but that's a second problem. As well. Why isn't that? That's a real problem for you is that you've got, among other things, a paragraph which alleges the 2001 conviction of arson out of the court next door. Judge, you have a second case that I just And then let me just finish this thought and on the record there. After that became final, it states, <clears throat> you committed the felony of aggravated assault and were convicted of that in 2010 in this court. Because you are familiar to me. Uh, I remember people's faces, certainly, uh, e even though there's been thousands. But <clears throat> here, you're looking at habitual felon status. So if all of this was found true, beyond a reasonable doubt, you were looking at no less than 25 years up to life in prison, most serious. There is another indictment? Yes, sir. sir. Okay, was that handed up recently? That was um, a crime alleged after he was out on bond on the one that your honor just went through. When was he indicted? An indictment date judge is March 30, 2022. Aggravated assault, family violence. It is habitual because of his priors. Why is that? Why is that taking over one year for us to get here? He's gone back and forth with different lawyers. This has actually been on uh, the trial docket previously. And, um, I've just been working with this new lawyer to try to resolve his issues. I know it's headed back to the trial docket. That would be correct, Your Honor. Um, as I stated, uh, Mr. Hand has offered um, a, a plea deals on both cases. I've tendered that over to Mr. Noble. Mr. Noble has rejected that. And so we're here today to uh, set these for trial. The new box. I think I already pulled it in the stack because it's not in the office. Hopefully. Three nine five four nine. No, I don't have it. Okay. I, uh, I, I'd like to see it. Okay. Any other? Where do you live? Um, currently, I'm staying right here. Where do you live? In North Carolina. I've been working out of town for the last nine months. I have 6261 Dave Street. Is that where you lived? No, sir. That's not that's my address on my, my driver's license. But I'm I got approved to go work out of state. I've been out of state for nine months working in North Carolina. Doing a job. Where did you live? It was my current address there, but now I live in North Carolina. I have a different address. When you lived here, where did you 62, live? 62, 61. That was your? Yes, sir. That's one job I'd like to say. Well, correct me if I'm wrong here. 
I'm looking at court order dated January 5th of 2022, a year and a half ago, where you were ordered to be on house arrest. GPS device can only leave home to go to work. Right. 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 And I got it all straightened out between my bondsman and working in college you. And they all got straightened out and approved me to go out of state and get a little bit of bondsman. That's not my question. I was about to ask. Sorry. That was on January 5th of 2022. This indictment here, <clears throat> 223959, where you're charged with uh, another family violence uh, event, a first degree felony with uh, those uh, two prior felonies of arson and then aggravated assault, which puts you in a <clears throat> habitual felon status. This indictment alleges that on or about March 17, 2022, that you were uh, Caused bodily injury to Kim Lake, Lee Knighton. And I'm looking at the affidavit for arrest. That was filed on March 17, which states that the Port Arthur police were dispatched to 2865 62nd Street in reference to family disturbance, <clears throat> not uh, 6261 Dave Street, where you're supposed to be living and were ordered to stay. That it was learned that you assaulted your stepmother. It turned from work and began drinking victim said you and he got into an argument it went into the garage breaking things being aggressive i mean is that where this happened or where did this happen you're, you're correct judge it, it happened at that location there at mr Knighton's place on 62nd street in port arthur is that right yes sir. okay I thought I had a court order that said that uh, here he is right here. You would be on house arrest, can only leave home to go to work. Must have a GPS device. Your Honor, if I may, um, yeah, what I'm, I'm not a privy to this information because this is information prior to my coming on board. Mr. Noble would probably be a better person to address that question to you rather than me. I know what happened on my court order. Go ahead. Um, I got with Shorla Woods. I got with Shorla when I, um, and she got to apparently talked to y'all or and talked to my husband and got it approved and everything. And if I got moved or anything like that, I think the house was, was, was um, what do you call it? House arrest was been gone. It's been lifted for a long time. It's been, it's been gone a long time. I couldn't go in, so I wouldn't be able to go no anywhere. You said working home, and that's what I mean. Let me see the docket entry. Are you sure got it approved to Barney LeBlanc and you? I know they called and talked to some secretary and you approved it several times. I didn't approve you to go to somebody else's house and assault them. That's what I didn't approve, buddy. And this happened two months after this court order. Now, you if that court order don't look like I can't believe it's not butter. No, we're going to get you know. You know what I get the impression is you come to talk your way out of everything. <laughs> like you want to control the environment here. You're not in control right now. We're going to follow with, we're going to walk this through. Yes, sir. Is that okay with you? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, good. Because you don't have a choice. We're going to walk it through because looking at your choices you're here with two indictments for the same kind of thing you can't control your emotions obviously and then you hurt people on my watch which i 
I'm a little sensitive about it. All right, I want to know. On July 13th, the defendant was in court. July 13th of what? 2022. All right, that didn't have anything to do with the status in March of 2022, right? Correct, Judge. And the, why your clerk is pointing that out is it really answers the statements the defendant was making. That is the only time that there was a court action by your honor where you removed the GPS requirements and the home confinement. It was then that the court approved that he'd be allowed to go to Montana to work, for work purposes. For work purposes. The court, uh, when you are alleged to have committed this crime in March of last year, you were supposed to be at home. But that's not where this happened. The that's, indictment says right. it would happen at another event where you go and ruin people's lives. The reason I was at that house, that's my new address. That's where I got approved to stay because my old address, my cousin moved into it when I was out of town and I can't go back there. So I got approved to the Shoreline and my bossman to go to my mother's and my stepmother's house. And that was my address. That's, that's where I live. When I come in, house, when I got to go to court, that's where I come in. When was that? Um, when when did I approve that house? Was it Chad? Mm -mm. I mean, that was. I don't. I know. Of, two February? months. I know of no official action where that was done, Judge. And, it's and been in two months of I, when if, I made this order. If I may, Judge, if if the defendant is going to continue to make these kind of statements, I'd like to have him sworn in so I can use it. Your Honor, may I take a moment and just talk to my my client? I I understand where you're going to, and I and I don't think that he's on the same page as where you're at. But I understand. Uh, I'm certain he's not. Right, but I I understand where he's you're, not in the same book. Right, and I understand where you're coming from, and I would like to take a step back, talk to him, and and, and give him give him the opportunity to think about what you're talking about, not what he's thinking about. Well, I just want to get to what the facts are here I, this whole thing is just don't like every, things not being in the order properly and i don't like the name not being right uh, i don't understand how that that's just i don't think i think that may have started long ago uh in galveston county but Accuracy is, I'm very sensitive about that. Um, stand by. This one. Thing. Um, yeah, go ahead. No, I just, uh, at this point in time, I just apprised uh, Mr. Noble as to what your position was and, and where his position was so much more different. And he understands the. Uh, yeah, no, that. I just. Uh, so, is uh, on his behalf from the defense, is it y'all's uh, position that. Uh, at the time of this event, no, you're wrong. He was living. Well, that's what he just said. Uh, Twenty-eight sixty-five seconds. He was confused, and he, no, he, he wasn't. He, well, I mean, but I, I can't I, but speak for him. I know then. you're going to represent him, right. and I trust you, right? And 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 what I just did, you was, just what you just did. No, I'm interrupting. You lied to me because. I am looking at the probable cause affidavit that has your address, not only of Dave Street, but after you were arrested at, in front of the magistrate, you told them you lived at 6261 Dave Street. Your bond that was posted on May 17th, 
shows from your bondsman, 6261 Dave Street. You just lied to me. Your bond is revoked. You were taken into custody. Your, mom, your Honor, if I may, just yes, if I can say just one thing. Um, as you know, I'm not in, I, I don't stand in his shoes. But based upon my discussion with him, he was confused about that portion. I don't think he intentionally lied to you. I'll be the fact finder on that one. It was pretty obvious. He was insistent that he had a right to be there. That's where he was living. But this whole file shows otherwise. Yes, sure. <clears throat> he lies. And we relied on certain statements when we when we fixed the bonds. But if it's determined that those statements are false, the court can correct. But to get in front of me and lie like this at this stage, when, when you're looking at habitual felon status, is pretty foolish. And to try to try to pick the court's pocket, as it were, about our orders. I know what our orders are, but thank goodness everybody files affidavits at the time of events so that if someone attempts to try to sleight of hand the court later, like you just did, then we can go and find out what the facts are. Yes. But you were living at Dave Street. That's what you told the bondsman. That's what the bondsman told us. You were living on Dave Street. That's what the magistrate you told you wrote in your application and the magistrate signed it. And that's what the indictment says that you uh, were living on Dave Street. The point of the matter is if I can't trust you when I ask you questions that are important uh, concerning the materiality of, of uh, these bond conditions, and if you're not straightforward with the court, you pay a price. And your bond is revoked. You lied to this court. That's just the answer instead of having my. Yeah, keep talking. Line. Go ahead. You've you done so well. You know, would you just let me? That's this okay. address that I have on my driver's license. That's it. I've never changed it. But I've got it approved to Ronnie. And I never, I never go anywhere without him letting know. Maybe something is in your ears that you don't. I don't get <laughs> Yeah, but at, in March 2022, where this indictment says you assaulted a person at uh, 61st Street. Yeah, on 61st Street, which is Port Acres. Yes, that's right. You clearly told us all while well, I was living there. That was that was my house. That was where I was, and you had proved me to live to live there, which I don't see. But you were at house arrest. You were home arrest except for work. Don't look like I can't I believe it's not butter. You just surprised that, because <laughs> this is the court order right there. I, I mean, this is the court order on which is uh, dated on January that I ordered you to home, home confinement, house arrest, <clears throat> GPS device. In fact, it's in bold. Oh, but your honor, so, wouldn't wouldn't the GPS uh, system, who's monitoring the system, have realized that his new address was 61st Street and no longer at Dave Street? Because the GPS is going to track them to here to that location, and it's and it's going to, he's going to be there for that at that location for at least eight to ten hours from six p.m. to maybe six a.m. So notification, I believe. I don't understand what you're talking about. The event I'm talking about this event on or about March 17, 2022, within two weeks of when I signed the bond order, which says home confinement in the GPS device. Right. And his home was 6261 Dave Street. Right. Which, which at this event that you're trying y'all are trying you, you know don't I understand you get in trouble no no y'all you're, you're trying correct. to sell to me no. that he was living at on uh uh 
Well, at it was a bond forfeiture. At the location of this uh, event, we want to get this straight. Sixty first is sixty second street. Okay, twenty eight sixty five six sixty second street, which is Port Augusta, Port Acres. I knew what that was. Port Acres growing up and growth. <clears throat> but this event occurs on or about March 17th, 2022. So the police report, who, which is dated March 22nd, the time of the event, uh, states the defendant, <laughs> his address is 6261 Day Street. So he gave that. Right. That's his address, not the event, the address in Port Acres. Plus, let's see when he posts he, he goes to the magistrate on 318 judge pash and he writes in his address is 6261 dave street Rose, texas mm -hmm. you're correct honor your honor he clearly moved without notification to the court or without he didn't know no. he's telling everybody right. that he's still at dave street right. so he didn't move or he's like you know he, he's got to pick where he's lying he's lying to everybody he's lying if he really was in in port acres and he lied under oath yes. to the magistrate yeah. he lied to the uh police who were doing conducting this investigation because they don't invent this they must have gotten a, some kind of an id from him that he vouched for and then his bondsman, and this is this is kind of the piece that a resistance, as it were. The bondsman on five seventeen, who come and speak for him and post his bond on May, say he's living at sixty two sixty one Dave Street. You can shake your head all day long, but that's what this states under oath. To this court, yes, sir, this is your own bondsman, you were lying to. You lied to everybody. Well, we, I'm sorry, yes, but this is not the way we play. And you're speaking over me. That's weird. But that's not the way. Accuracy is important. <clears throat> now you can tell lies, but when you get caught, shame on you, because you're fouling up the system. You're disrupting the system. <clears throat> you're manipulating, but you have no business to be manipulating anything when you're on two bonds now and you certainly have no business lying and giving false statements because this court doesn't uh, find that amusing and we'll take it into account when i'm setting a bond because factors such as whether we can rely on what you say and uh whether you can <clears throat> be honest about uh conforming to uh the rules of behavior while on bond are not believable because of the way you are anyway i think i've shown several events here of false statements you uh, made and you still try to sell it until your attorney has to admit on your behalf that you are making mistakes. But anyway, right now your bond is revoked on each case. <clears throat> One of the conditions of bond is don't commit a crime, but trying to mislead this court and other court officials while on bond, which are clearly done, not only today, but during the course of the setting of the bond and the administration of the bond in this most recent case of another family violence <clears throat> shows this court that you cannot be trusted and that your bond is best uh, revoked for your false and misleading behavior. I certainly will always reconsider uh, on new uh, information, but I'm not sure what he can. I, I trust you. <clears throat> I just don't trust uh, you. And you have earned the distrust that this court has. Statement of saying, no, you've no. been quiet. Judge, I, I, 
I've been researching all the questions and uh, there have been no emails received from Charlotte ch showing any changes, which she would do. It's her routine and habit and practice. But, so nothing changed there. But the point is, but from on March 17th and the events around March 17th, which are within two he months was, of the court setting the bond in the first case and the bond conditions where home confinement, it is a obvious yeah. that he was not in home confinement yeah. based upon the reading of these this data here. Not only is he not <clears throat> uh, over, uh, not, not only is he, uh, misleading uh, as to his statements concerning his residence that he tried to sell was at the location of this new indictment, which is in a different city <clears throat> from Gross, from Dave Street. <clears throat> but that what he told the court is completely different from what he told police who investigated the case completely different from what his bondsman pledged to the court uh, was his address completely different from what he told the magistrate when the magistrate conducted the magistrate proceedings the day after his arrest yes your honor you're correct my advice is be, learn to be honest for a change. You've got to change your act. Your act's not working well because we can catch you pretty quickly. You're transparent in your lies, but being dishonest to this court only can get you in trouble because these procedures are based upon reliance on statements. And when they're not factual, then somebody pays a price because facts and accuracy are treated with a high level of importance in the process until you can appreciate and understand that uh we can't trust you in the bond your honor but besides on but besides not to say that you committed a, you've allegedly committed a crime at a location that defies the court order of two months prior your honor on an administrative matter yes, shifting sir. gears rather than we trying to set this for trial at this point in time may i have a four-week uh so that i can talk to my client and to Mr. Five? Ham, five weeks better for that, you. Four is fine, Your okay. Honor, because I just looked at my schedule and I have federal stuff that I have to juggle around. If if we may, uh, and then that way um, we can come back. And if if there okay. are reconsiderations, I'll get that done. If there's something that Mr. Ham and I can work out, we'll, we'll okay. try and get that Thank done. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. Okay, get a resetting for this. Thank you. Huh? Yes, his bond is revoked. He is ordered into arrest. What the bond? Mr. Fullerton, come on up. On Mr. Fullerton's case.